We saw the Hornier, or the Haranir, as many people like to call them, very early on in the expansion, right? And I talked about how they just kind of got thrown to the wayside, but that probably means they're going to get their own patch. Their very specific own patch and delving into their story more, maybe talking about the root lands. We've, we've speculated a lot on this stuff. But let's see here. Belular has the real reason you haven't seen, uh, you've seen so few Hornier in The War Within. Let's see what Belular has to say. The War Within cinematic introduced us to the key races of Kaz al Kar, the Earthen, the Arathi, the Nerubian, and these guys, the Hironir. Part elf, part troll, but definitely something new. They're mysterious. Tra is it confirmed that they're part elf and part troll? Like, is that is that actually in the lore now? Because I know that's what we all say, and it's probably true, but I don't know if that's actually been confirmed in the game yet. Level to where we think they came from, and the game puts you to sleep and spawns you elsewhere. And when I think back oh, to that cinematic, notice. it's strange. For yeah. a group that we only spent a handful of minutes within the campaign, they get quite a lot of cinematic screen time. And then when you look at her eyes oh, in the cinematic, you see that they're green. You then see that these are life, nature-aligned beings. And then, if you're like me, you remember an in-game prophecy. A prophecy that says, beware the eyes of green. So oh, today, shit. it's the story of the Haranir, and very likely, where we will go next in the War Within, and all made possible, because of today's sponsor. Who are going to help you save about money the, fascinating. Oh, rocket so, money, nice. I forgot about the uh, the green eyes look, thing. I think a lot of us speculated that that was Illidan at the time. You are the eyes of green. Uh, could it be the horn here? Maybe. Stay on top of your subscriptions and manage your money. And the best thing is you can get started today for free at rocketmoney.com forward slash Bagular Warcraft. Now, subscriptions then, they make it so easy. They oh, securely yeah. and safely identify recurring charges for you. Then, in their UI, you can just cancel them in a few taps and they've put the work in to make it a smooth, painless process. So if fixing subscriptions has just been a chore for you, well, now's the time they've made it easy. But there is more than that. They actually can help you with bill negotiations. You just upload your bills and they can help you negotiate them down. And you can do damn well there, as an example. Hopefully it doesn't tell you to unsub from Samicus. I was able to negotiate no, no. 500 down, 50 up, to 1,000 down, 100 up, for half of the previous monthly cost. So you can make big gains. Oh, and I love the stats too, like on subscriptions, they've cancelled over $500 million worth of subscriptions, <sighs> and they've helped save their customers up to $740 a year. That's just money staying in your pocket. Damn. Rocket Money's got other great tools too to help you budget. So if you want to spend less and save more, you can join the over 5 million Rocket Money members using rocketmoney.com com forward slash Bellular Warcraft or is. just by clicking that link below where you can start for free and then unlock more features with premium at rocketmoney.com slash Bellular Warcraft. Okay, back to the wow. Towards the end First of the campaign, contact. we crashed into Ashkahet on the back of an Arathi airship and as we fought the Nerubians, someone was watching. They were not a Nerubian commander, they were something else. A mysterious traveler, one that we would soon meet. Her name is Orwena, and she is a Haranir. Not an enemy. She immediately does rescue us, but she's not necessarily a friend. She scarpers off with barely a word, but as we press it's, on, the path to It's Ashka a very... Is it, this whole uh, inter interaction, everything... Did it, you guys just remind you of the, you know, Avatar, the movie, obviously? Avatar and Pandora and all the interaction. The first interaction she had with... I forgot what his name, Sully was or whatever... She shoots the arrow, saves his life, and then he chases. It's like literally frame for frame <laughs> the same thing as that story. Uh, whoever made the Haranir obviously loves Avatar, I would say. Off with barely a word, but as we press on, the path to Ashgahet seems to follow the too, course eerily of giant similar. Roots. And as we venture deeper into Ashgahet, we find something unsettling. It's called the Breathing Pit. It's where those roots meet the black blood that we know the Nerubians have been using, that they've been mining. Thanks, we see the two mix, the roots and the blood. It turns fleshy. It's disgusting. And it's there that we once again meet Orwena. She's not really one for conversation, but what little words we share have impact. She says this, These roots are part of something much greater than you know, and it is my job to protect them. We soon learn mm, that she too hears the world souls call, that she has also noticed that song has became discordant, and her mission, the reason why she's here, is to find out why. And as far as the War Within campaign goes, that's it. We just have these mystery, elf troll looking creatures that seem to have a nature affinity. But of course, between world design, side quests, and the lore, we're given enough clues to solve the puzzle. All right. 
Yeah, Last time I, I, the, the whole thing about turning the roots fleshy, obviously very old goddess, curse of flesh. Like we know that that's what they do. When they influence something, they turn it fleshy, right? Now, I, I don't know what, what, would, what would be required to turn a root from something planty to something fleshy. I don't know if we're talking about the same effects here as what it does to, say, a titan body like a human turning it fleshy, but uh, obviously old got influenced. In this lore series, we discovered what the roots really are, that they absolutely seem to be from the myth known as the legend of Aluna here. The legend fits yeah, Kazalgar perfectly, and focusing in on today's story, what matters, of course, is those roots. They're a remnant of a titan disagreement where A&R, the titan of life, planted a world tree. Its up, seed came from Elune, a goddess of life, and of course, the main deity of the night elves. The thing is, Amunthul, ruler of the titan pantheon, disagreed. He saw it as more of a weed. He ripped it from the earth, but he didn't realize that the roots remained. Anar's tears nourished those roots, and she decided to have her forces protect them. And of course, as we adventure... By the way, uh, Aenar lied to him about this. Amethul didn't realize the roots were still there, but Aenar did very quickly, and she never told him. So uh, there's that divide there between the Titans that it's gonna... Some people think Aenar might side with us in the end. We'll have to wait and see how that whole thing plays out, but uh, it's there's certainly uh, some storylines that are gonna come to fruition here as we go through the World Soul Saga in game we see the okay, Frey Sworn. Okay. They are sent by Freya. Of course, Freya is ANR's main subordinate on Azeroth. Mm. But clearly that's not all. There's another line from the legend. Its final passage goes like this. It is said that much later, as the world entered a new age, mysterious guardians arrived who dedicated their lives to protecting the roots. Oh, the Harnir? Is okay. that what they're talking about? Think about that line. Think back to Orwena her words match it perfectly. Yeah. But we can read... Even their gear, like everything about them is very rooty. Like they are rooted in the roots. That's what you could say. Their lore is rooted in the roots. Look at all their gear and everything. Everything about them, even their huts, which isn't pictured in here, it's all roots. Like they, they clearly... The cinematics, playing with the roots. Like that, that is clearly part of their culture, probably part of their religion even. It's quite clear who sent her people, or at least who they are aspected towards. And it certainly isn't Aenar, because by the time they arrived, Aenar has already been destroyed by Sargaris and only exists in a spiritual form. Right. Back to Ashkahet, where myth in mind, we continue our adventure to Camp Yeah, see Orne. here, you can see their huts too, right? Look at this. I mean, it's all roots here with leaves. Roots and leaves. It's everything they have. When we get there, the mood is tense. Two Harrenir watch over a band of resting Arathi soldiers. We learn that the soldiers have just survived an Arubian ambush, but tensions are obviously still high. They're resting, yes, but their swords are still drawn. They do not trust these mysterious creatures who are very short on words. But within a few quests, we're able to set everyone at ease, and then we begin to learn things. It turns out the Harrenir's menacing silence is not because they hate us. It is to them out of duty. It's not out of mistrust. Their mission is sacred to them and secrecy is absolutely essential to it. And that makes total sense when you think about it. Right. The roots were never supposed to happen. Amunthul was never supposed to know. They are guardians of these roots. And as I'll discuss later, they seem to have a little bit of a connection to Elun. But of course, right above them, we find the rest of Kazalgar. We find the Isle right. of Dorne, full of Earthen. Earthen, who the Harrenir could only assume would follow the lead of Amunthul, of Odin, and want to destroy the roots. Just yeah, they probably see they probably see the Earthen as as uh, not friendly or enemies even because yeah they're right they remember they're like almost a secret offshoot of the Titans at this point, protecting the roots, which you know Amunthul clearly didn't like. And these guys, they would assume, probably follow. The Earthen probably follow Amethul's, uh, you know, directions and stuff like that. So they probably don't want them to find the roots. And that's why they've remained so secretive, cloaked in the shadows. And it almost fits their, their lore in the fact that we saw them early in the expansion and then they disappeared. We haven't seen them since. We quested with them a little bit. You can do a daily here or there. But, like, really, they've disappeared from the storyline. And that, again, fits their secrecy, right? Like, they are very secret people. And they won't become relevant maybe until they have to again. You've been at work, damn. That's a lot of work, sweet. Yeah, wouldn't it be the first time Lyalotha ends with a near frame to, for frame? Yeah, for, yeah, of Mordor falling, yes. They definitely take inspiration from other fantasies. Odin, and want to destroy the roots just as one removes a tree that is cracking a pavement. 
And so our first impressions show us a wild yet powerful race. Bat-formed druids, warriors brutally efficient with fang and claw, they're vicious, they're menacing, even down to the red roots of their banner. And taking a look at their banner more closely, we see roots writhing around something. Yeah. What is it? Does that, is that represent the world soul or... Is that the Halifall crystal? Kind of looks like it. I mean, it's, it's literally got the fatter part of the point at the bottom and the pointier at the top. Or being a little bit more literal, does it represent the location they find themselves in right now? Does it depict Belladar? Is it perhaps a banner Maybe. of their expedition and not their people? But what sticks out the most to me is a sense of familiarity. Look at them. We've obviously met their evolutionary cousins. We know their shared ancestor. So it's time for Elf Evolution 101. But if that's something you already know, definitely listen on. Because there's another angle to it that yeah. you won't have known. It seems very clear. The Blizzard actually went back and looked at the details when making the Harrenier. <laughs> At first no, glance, the Harrenir resemble a mix of Troll and Night Elf with a little touch of the Fey of Ardenweald. And that makes a yep. lot of sense. Let me explain the situation. About 16,000 years ago, Trolls reigned supreme in Azeroth. Right. Azeroth did not look the way it does today. All that we know was one continent, and that continent was called Kalimdor. At the time, Trollkind dominated Azeroth, but that... By, by not... the way, no race in all of Azeroth has fallen off as hard as the Trolls. I mean, these guys were literally the epicenter of, of innovation, of race, of power, of everything. And just kingdom by... Zandalar, I think, was the last one to fall, but, like, the Zandalari, the Amani, Zulfarak, like, all of... Man, troll nation after troll nation just fell. It's unbelievable how <laughs> their history goes. It, they've taken a lot of else, that's for sure. And then, literally, the Zandalari were like, okay, they're this legendary tribe that still exists out there, and then in BFA... Their kingdom gets invaded by the Alliance. Their king dies and they fall. I, I just, I don't know. It's been tough being a troll in Azeroth over the years. Not last. A spiral of things, actually caused by Zalatath, led to the troll Akir War. It was absolutely brutal. And after the war, Trollkind found itself spread out around the world. And perfectly for our purposes today, we have a map of where they all settled. One tribe of dark trolls we can see settled near the Well of Eternity. Now, yeah. the Well was a remnant from the Titans' war against the Old Gods millennia ago. And in reality, what it is, is a wound. It's a wound in the planet. And that means that its waters became imbued with the world soul's lifeblood. That made the Well a special place, a magical place. The trolls who settled there changed. Over time, they became less troll-like. Nice, a unique mushy. culture developed around the moon goddess Alun, said right. to actually sleep within the well by day. Right, well, and, and that's why that I think the Haranir, the troll uh, history and everything else are going to become very much relevant because we're going to get an elf expansion, right? The entirety of Midnight is going to be an elven expansion. That's what's been talked about before. That's what Chris Metzen confirmed already. So how do you talk about the Night Elves without talking about where they originally came from and the Well of Eternity and the troll history and everything like that? It's all going to become relevant for sure. ...within the Well by day. And relatively soon, these trolls would become what we today call Night Elves. And that is the origin of all elf kind on Azeroth. Right. Now the Harrenir. The Harrenir are new but we can take a look at them and we can absolutely see that they are of the same lineage. But they're definitely not descended from the Night Elf line. And that's where things make sense. Looking back to the map of troll populations post the Troll Akir War, we see the Dark Trolls settle near Mount Hygel. That's an area sacred to the Wild Gods, and that's actually going to become relevant soon. But even more curious, Chronicle tells us these trolls lived deep within the mountains, caverns, and tunnels. Oh. That's rather relevant. Take a look around Khazalgar, especially... Yeah, okay, so he's hinting at the Dark Trolls being the direct descendants of the Haranir, right? Like the Haranir evolved into the Dark... or the... The Dark Trolls evolved into the Haranir, I should say, because they're like the missing link between Night Elf and the... Interesting. ...and tunnels. That's rather well, relevant. Hygel, Take a look around Khazalgar, especially look up, and you will see tunnels with nature pouring forth. It certainly seems to be the tunnels the Haranir travel. So yeah. I believe the Haranir are descendants of that group of Dark Trolls. I kind of agree. I mean, when the legend of Aluna here tells us that... It is said that much later, as the world entered a new age, mysterious guardians arrived who dedicated their lives to protecting the roots. I think it's obviously them, especially because it says 
as a new age. That means a fundamentally distinct period of time, not whenever a &R was able to talk to Freya, which happened unfathomably long ago. And beyond that temporal clue, there's also religion. Essentially, the beings that night elves called wild gods to the trolls, they're called the Loa. And yeah, there is a Loa of the moon. Now, sure. I'm going to save you a big, deep lore dive, but basically, whenever a wild god dies, it goes back to Ardenweald to uh, essentially recover and recuperate. Ardenweald represents the death part of the cycle of life and death. It's ruled by the Winter Queen, and Elune seems to be the Winter Queen's counterpart on the other side of that. And that means that the Wild Gods and co. have all got a fundamental and deep link to Elune. That right. actually gives us a bit of a link between the Harrenir and Elune. Now, if that world tree, Elune here, was planted by A&R, but the seed was from Elune, and bearing in mind that a seed from Elune recently planted a Mirdrasil in the Dragonflight expansion, then it does make total sense that the Harrenir are Elune's forces. It essentially fits their religion. That, that could, yeah, it fits their religion. It fits it all perfectly. And I think Elune certainly, again, right? When you think Elune, who do you, which race on Azeroth do you think of first? The Night Elves. Another elven race, very much attached to the elf expansion that we're going to get. That's why I think like the Harney are probably going to be the bridge between this expansion and the next one. That's, that's, that seems more and more likely as we go forward here. By the way, j -Mall, awesome, man. Glad you got the good news. Uh, yeah, it's it seems like it's all going to be relevant, and it's all tying back to this elf expansion, Elune, World Tree, all that shit's coming into uh, in perspective here. Their set of beliefs and their purpose that that would develop from the Loa of the Trolls, and we think about the Loa of the Trolls, they are directly connected to Elune. Again, I will save you the lecture on that, but the point basically is, it seems like there's a solid link between the Harrenir and Elune, and if the Harrenir are protecting the tree, then they are absolutely, well, doing something that Elune would want. <laughs> That makes a lot of things make sense. A lot of things fit. That yeah. Elune nurtured the Night Elves as their moon goddess, but likely also influenced the dark trolls of Hygel towards defending the roots of the tree that she had a and R plant deep within Azeroth millennia ago. So makes with that sense. in mind, let's return to the side quests and see where they go. The Black Blood. This is the Maddening Deep. It's a Black Blood ecosystem that tells a terrifying story. Exposure to the blood traps souls and traps them in a realm called the Unseeming, like Nihilotha or perhaps the Emerald Nightmare. It's no. a void infection that's latched onto something literally described as a realm below our own where true horrors dwell. Now, somehow, this, uh, this whole thing reminds me of, uh, oh my God, what's that Netflix show? Um, Stranger Things. That's what it reminds me of. All of this looks like this looks like inspired by Stranger Things, right? The other side flipping to another dimension, the roots extending between the dimensions. My God, this seems like uh, like Blizzard employees are just taking uh, so much inspiration from all these uh, their favorite shows. I don't know. It's I had believed the Black Blood maybe I'm tripping. For so it does remind me of it. Not a problem, but Arwena knows better. A cataclysm struck Kazalgar. A cataclysm that sent Beladar dark and evidently reactivated the Black Blood. We know that event was so probably come back in the, next the planet, but expansion. what Orwena felt was a new discordant note in Azeroth's song. Her investigation finally led her to the Maddening Deep, and there her worst suspicions would be confirmed. And we'd also find Hanan, another Harrenir, but one who, in trying to cover his tracks against Nerubian attention, ended up being covered in black blood. He fled in terror, and we find him in a cave screaming. We don't oh, know uh, why. We couldn't see what he was seeing until we joined him in the Unseeming by right. covering ourselves in the blood. And when we do, spiders are everywhere. The more stacks of black blood infection we get, the... Yeah, so, so the, the, you go into that dimension, you can actually see what's there. Hey, say, what's up, Onhari? Yeah, yeah, oh, HP Lovecraft, I know. Uh, H, for sure, like, Lovecraft is, gar like, we already know. The old gods and everything about them is very much Lovecraftian inspired. You can literally look at Lovecraftian art, and it's like, oh my god, that's that's Nazoth. Like it's a very obvious that all this stuff comes from there. So yes, but it's probably a blending, right, of the two, where you got this old Lovecraftian lore, and then they're blending it with a bunch of these new shows that they get inspired by and watch. Bigger the spiders are, and once free, Hanan told us that he felt paranoid in the Unseeming, that he felt like he was drowning <laughs> in darkness. And that's the first hint. 
The it second is a direct lore of WoW, yes. Orwena complained that the black blood gave her a headache and made her confused. The dissonance grew so loud that she could hear nothing else. The dissonance she speaks of is the dissonance in Azeroth's world soul, and it's the Ooh. point of the unseeming. So let's step back a second and figure out what we've learned here. The Unseeming is clearly a massive threat, and in Arakara, we find this tunnel of black blood leading into the depths. The Nerubians right. have been harvesting it. A small drop creates an ascendant, but the amount they have points to something far larger. Now, we destroyed their operation in the Maddening Deep, along with Orwena, and we dove into the Unseeming. We tried to find ways to cleanse it. But when we do, well, we found loads of lost Nerubians, but not just them. We also find a faceless one, a powerful being similar to the servant of the old gods that was crushed by Anserek and right, threads of destiny. That being, that faceless one told us that in the unseeming, the void is eternal. This is the final warning before Orwena admitted there was no immediate way to cleanse the black blood corruption. So what we know, the black blood creates disharmony, discord. It wrecks the mind, and from right. our research so far, there's nothing we can do to undo the damage, which is why we need to figure out what's next. And I'll show you that in a second, but stepping back, what we've discovered here is a void realm, one that makes you feel like you are drowning in blackness, paranoid, confused, a growing dissonance in the world soul song. Now, look around the world. We see Saronite under Northrend. We see the Shah so active in Pandaria. Right. The Black Empire had a long time to fill our planet with old god blood. Azeroth is covered in it. And with Sargaris's action, it somehow became active. Something happened with Belladar. The Black Blood began to manifest the unseeming. So with what we're seeing with Orwena, with Hanan, and even our own experience in the unseeming, it seems that that is happening on a planetary scale. A world soul totally off balance right when the void is trying to make its move. That potentially, beyond just using the Nerubians, is what Zalatath was trying to make use of this whole time. So figuring out how to stop that and how to help the Haranir is going to be core to our future. And that may lead us to the root lines. Hey, yeah, we talked about this. We're gonna this get is a the last thing I patch. want to show you today. It's a map allegedly leaked before launch, and it shows what could be working titles for each zone. Yeah. You can see a fifth one, and it's called The Rootlands. I mean, immediately that feels like a Haranir thing. Yeah, and no I want doubt. you to think back to the roots above the ruptured lake. It's what appears to be a chamber between Hallowfall and Ajkahet, which is also where we first discover the Haranir. If you try to fly through what looks like an entrance, you'll just be teleported back to the lake. I've never with tried this. The I same didn't... drowsy debuff that you get when you try to go out of bounds in the Emerald Dream. Again, kind of like the uh, Hallowfall crystal one, too. What, I wonder what happened that here. That feels like a connection to a Luna here. So let's add all yeah, of this probably. together. We have a map for the Rootlands, one that seemingly could line up with this entrance, an entrance that acts bizarre when you try to fly up it. And then we just look at the Haranir. They're clearly important, as shown by the cinematic, but they were barely in the game. Yet, when we talk to them, when we do their side quests, we learn that the Black Blood is doing a hell of a lot more than just creating ascended Nerubians. Right. That all points to the Haranir playing a major role in the War Within's next chapter. Many expect them to potentially be an allied race, but if you think about the phrase, I think they will beware be. the eyes of green, well, who knows? Perhaps they have a dark side, or perhaps they just are working against those who issued that prophecy. So that's who the Haranir are. If you want to find out, though, why these roots are important, and why we're even in Khazalgar, why Khazalgar looks the way that it does, well... Got to check out this video next. It tells the story. Yeah, very interesting. And uh, I definitely think the Haranir are going to act as, you know, they're, they're the bridge race between the trolls and the, and the elves. And I think they're going to be the bridge race between the War Within and the Midnight Expansion. I could totally see that happening. All this lore seems like it's going to become more relevant very, very soon.